All right, so we back with Sensational Talk. I can't even give this an episode number because this is this is like an in-between episode. For some reason, you're back here again. I don't know why, but um, welcome back. Thank you. I don't know what I did to deserve this honor, but I'm uh, really happy to be here. You don't. You don't, but you're here. Wow. Okay. You know, so we'll, we'll take that. Yeah, you're welcome for making your video go viral, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. you, may have, you may have had a little hand in that. Just, just, just a little. A tad, just a little bit. I, I don't like to toot my own horn. Uh, beep. Beep, beep. So. <laughs> toot, toot. I'm not even going to waste no time. We're going to get right into it. Right into it. I'm ready. So there's been a topic going around on social media about what a quote unquote top tier man is. Whew. And um, you may have seen this video, but if you haven't, let me um, let me just go on and um, play it through real quick. Go for it. Oh, technical difficulties, y'all. Here you go. Eight percent of the entire world is six foot four. I make well over a hundred hundred k a year, and I'm black at that. If you add that on, mm-hmm. so just if we speak out those figures, the things that women are attracted to, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not gonna toot my own horn, but I'll let you do the math. Okay, before we go, <laughs> <laughs> so we all toot in our own horn. <laughs> That's what it is. What do you define as a top tier man? What I will tell you is that a top tier man is not going to Google how many men, what percentage of men are six foot four. I'll tell you that much. I've never Googled how many women are five feet tall. (laughs) That's not something that I will ever do. And that's not to clown him. I just found it very interesting that he specifically knew that number of how many men are You got to have your stats right before you spit it out of your mouth. I guess. Because then you look like a fool. I feel like he knew that he was going to have to defend himself someday. And that was what he decided. <laughs> Let me Google this real quick and see. Okay. Top tier, man. I don't think there's a set definition. These are labels that people want to put on themselves. I don't care for labels. Be a good person. Be a kind person. Be a decent person. But if we're looking at top tier as far as what women are looking for, I can't speak for men. I can only speak for what Veronica would consider top tier. And I think I actually commented on that video on TikTok you may have, or, but, um, you know. or on yours. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm going to say what I said there. A top tier man has nothing to do with his physical attributes. It has everything to do with how you make me feel. Am I safe with you? Do you make me feel protected? Do you make me feel like we could build something together? And the fact that he, like listed all these physical things it it kind of makes it seem like he doesn't have any depth to him because he would have been like no i'm your protector i'm a top tier man because a b and c not because this is how i look this is my skin color and this is how much money i bring to the table as a woman i'm looking for so much more than that it's nice when you got tall dark and handsome and you got money okay that's nice but that's not gonna sustain a, at least a woman like me I got my own money. I don't need yours. And a shorter man who's a little lighter could be just as handsome as a tall man who's a little darker. So um, for me, a top tier man has more to do with what we can build together and how we can grow together versus what you look like and how much money you're bringing to the table. Also, the things that he listed, I feel like those those attributes are are temporary. Those things. I mean. Yeah, money could be around for a lifetime. Money goes down like in generations, but every everybody wrinkles up. If if you if you are that lucky, because some people don't make it, no, some people don't make it that far. But right. as far as looks, those fade. I don't care who wants to say, "Oh, she's she's old and beautiful." No, you you wrinkled up, man. It's it, it's over, and that's 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 not something. I mean, that that definitely wouldn't be in my top to say. What makes me a top tier man as far as looks? Right. Because I think if I asked you what makes you a top tier man, do you feel like you're a top tier man, first of all? And then what makes you a top tier man? I don't feel like you would tell me, well, Veronica, 3% of men are six foot seven. So that makes me top tier. No, that makes you, that definitely puts you in a category, but that doesn't necessarily make you top tier. Like what else makes you top tier? Like what else do you have to, to offer that makes you top tier? And I will say... Because somebody responded to one of my comments and said, oh, so if he was short and broke, 
then, you know, you wouldn't want him either. I'm like, first of all, relax, because you don't know what I want. Second of all, I'm five feet tall. I don't really have too many standards when it comes to height because everybody's taller than me. And second of all, or third, maybe I'm at three. I think I'm at three or four. A guy who makes $100,000 a year and is not financially savvy and has no financial, you know, knowledge or how to do certain things with his money could be way more broke than a guy who brings home 75, 80, Eighty thousand dollars a year. That's true. Just because you're making a hundred k a year doesn't mean you know how to manage your money. It means that you got a good job that is paying you well, but that doesn't equate to knowing how to invest your money. That doesn't equate to knowing not to just spend to spend. Knowing how to make same, you know smart decisions when it comes to that money. You could be in more debt than somebody who brings home sixty five k, for example. That's true. Me personally, though. I don't feel like I'm a top tier man. Maybe in a couple years, I don't feel like I, I've reached the level to where I can say that I am a top tier man. Um, I think I'm a great man. I think I'm a great husband. I think I'm a great provider. I don't. I, I don't know. Top tier just sounds cocky to me. Even if you have the 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 proper credentials to define yourself as top tier. I don't think I have that in me. I don't think the men who are top tier are out here banging their chest saying they're top tier. Like, I will never know who's top tier by like 20 men could be standing in a line and I'll never know just by them standing there because the one who is top tier, he's not going to be like, it's me. I don't I don't think a lot of top tier men, whatever that definition is, know that they're top tier men. I think the person who they're involved with is more able to determine if their man is top tier to them. And I'm fine with that if my woman wants to label me as that. Right. But me, I can't label myself as that because I, I feel like I still got a lot of growth in me and a, a, a lot of stuff to to learn. You're getting up there in age, so I yeah, feel like well, you need to... It may be over. It may, I may <laughs> never reach top tier level. <laughs> you may never But, you know, uh, yeah. I, I, can always, I can always try. No, I get it. Um, but it's true. Like, your partner should tell you that you're top tier. Because humility also is part of that being top tier. Being able to be humble enough to be like, look, I'm just doing the best I can. If the best you can happens to mean that you treat your partner with respect, that you treat your partner with love, that you care about them, that you get on airplanes and take them anywhere they want to go in the world or on a cruise ship. Who knows? Wherever, whatever your partner, me, <laughs> whatever your partner wants to do, you do it. No. Um, but someone, I could date two people at different parts of my life and someone could totally be like, Veronica's a top tier woman, like 100% top tier. And the other one could be like, hmm, she's not. And that's okay because you're right. It's all about perspective. Like, top tier looks different for everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, just him sitting there like, Saying he's top tier by itself automatically made him not top tier. Now, the thing with, with Cooley is I've watched plenty of his uh, No Fugazi podcasts on YouTube, and I'll be lying if I said that I didn't agree with some of the stuff he says. However, I feel like he's a very intelligent, good looking black brother who says a lot of stupid shit out of his mouth. Shit. Um, Never heard of him before. But he, but he, but he's very intelligent, and some of his points they they do hit the mark. But stuff like this, and I'm big on you have to stand on what you preach. Like me, people see I do body positivity. I'm always shouting out thicker women, plus size, whatever the we case. We appreciate that, by the way. What whatever people or society wants to label, I really don't like using the word fat, but I stand on that. And even though you know. My wife may not like me putting it out there. My wife is a, a thicker, bigger woman. When people see me out, people see me out all the time. They don't see me walking, and they see me with my wife. They don't see me walking like six feet ahead of her. I claim that. And people who have seen my wife, they've messaged me and was like, it's good to see that the things you speak about, you really live that. Now, now the issue with him is a couple of videos were made where they exposed, like he has a, a TikTok page with him and his his young lady. A lot of the people just had the immediate issue with her being white. I don't care about that. If you love her, that's who you fall in love with. Cool. My issue is he was downplaying single women and single from the mother. outside, single mothers, sorry, single mothers. And from the outside looking in, again, I don't know their business. I can't assume that those kids, those other two white kids are his or aren't his. But if they are not, then he is dealing with a single mother himself. The same type of woman 
he's putting down on his podcast. Now, if that's what you do, cool, but you got to stand on that. Right. You, but you can't tell these ladies they're this and then you go home to that same lady. Right. Because how would like I would like to know how his wife feels about him saying that. What was it that it, they were for recreational use? Is that that was the words that were used? Single moms are for recreational use only. The fact that somebody even has a thought like that is concerning. Like, I don't look at people and think that I'm going to disrespect this person just because of the dynamic of their family or who they are, what they look like. Like when you see on the Internet, like you said, you're very body positive and all that. You, you promote body positivity. There's people that'll go on, you know, the videos of people who are larger and they'll make these comments that it's like, well, if they didn't want me to say this, then they wouldn't be fat on the Internet. And it's like, what? <laughs> I hate when I, I, I hate when I see those kind of comments. like I, I respect people because I was taught to be a respectful person. The only time that I'm going to disrespect you is if you disrespect me or if you deserve it. But I'm not just because you're fat, just because you're a single mother, just because you're A, B or C. I'm not going to sit here and just disrespect you just because you exist. That says more about me than it does about you. Like, it make it make sense. Why is it okay? Like, why is it so okay for people to just be out there, like, spewing hate and disrespecting people just because they put it out there? Because I'm fat and I exist. You can sit there and say all these awful things about me. But that's, 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 the, that's, the, whole, that's the whole issue with it. People love saying if you, if you put it on the Internet and you put it public and your account is not private, then you leave yourself out there for critique. Yes and no, because there's plenty of videos I've seen that don't have nothing to do with anybody's body. It just has to somebody saying something that I don't totally agree with. And I don't I don't even feel a need to leave a comment right. like I just scroll past it. It's so easy to just swipe up and people don't do it because they speaking negative like it always brings engagement. That brings yeah. the highest. I've never seen something positive surpass something negative like right. people flock to negativity it, like rage bait because it's, it's like it baits people to like have these conversations have the arguments and like we've always said engagement is engagement it's like no publicity good publicity bad publicity engagement is engagement so if you're monetizing off of these platforms if people are arguing your comment sections you're you're monetizing off of it you're making money so why not post something controversial if it's guaranteed to bring you a couple hundred thousand dollars a year well, the thing is, too, some people say um, they wonder how his woman feels about it. And one could argue that she's OK with it because it's bringing them money. But at you know, at what cost? I get it. I get what you're saying. But money isn't everything. And people, they lose sight of just morals and, 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 and everything just just from the dollar sign. I feel like money is everything for some people. That's the that's the sad part that there are people out there who are willing to do anything. And I'm not talking about like regular like sex work and stuff like that. I'm talking about people who are out there risking their lives or saying controversial controversial things like this man or like the people who do the extreme mukbang videos. They're killing themselves over just for the money. And mm -hmm. that that's terrifying because you're you are letting go of your morals. You're getting you're letting go of your self-respect. You're letting go of any respect that you have for someone else. You're contributing to the bully culture all over money. And then, to me, that's not worth it. It's like going back to the whole like how negativity brings engagement. If someone were to ask me, what do I feel a top tier woman is? And I say something like to me, a top tier woman is a woman who's going to take my instructions, a woman who knowing that I'm the provider when I come in the house and I open my mouth, she just sits down <laughs> and shut the fuck up. <laughs> a woman who knows her place is a top tier woman. A woman who won't talk back to me is a top tier woman. But <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> if that came out just like that, the comments will eat me up. But that's not how I feel that that even if you did, though, if that's your perspective on what you feel a top tier woman is at, listen, if you find that woman, go for it. There's I feel like there's somebody out there for everybody. So 
he wasn't saying what he feels a top tier woman is. He's saying, I feel like I'm a top tier man. That means of- he's saying what women are thinking of him. And that's not what we're thinking of him. He needed to tell us what he thinks a top tier woman is. And then the woman that was sitting there, the young lady, she did a fantastic job of mm-hmm. verbalizing what we believe a top tier man is. And if you read the comments on your stitch to that video and the video that I originally saw it on, every, the women in the comments are like, she's absolutely right. And then you have the men in the comments like, nope, nope, that's not what it is. And we're like, you can't tell us what we want. We know what we want. Well, if you ever watch his podcast. I won't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've seen him in the room. And that's that's not to shade anyone, any woman who's been on his podcast. But this is the first time I've seen him sit across from an actual intelligent woman who leveled the playing field and I feel like he was stuck. Because if you, if you like I said, you, you'll never watch it, but if you watch how he conducts his podcast, these women, you could tell um, he's the smartest guy in the room. That is by design. And it's easy to do that when you're the smartest guy in the room. Exactly. That's like me having a bunch of children sit here and, exactly. and, and me control the conversation. They, they'll never have the upper hand. That is by design. People who like that, who feel that they're grand hills and they, they're like above everyone, they're going to make sure they're the smartest person in the room so that they can confuse other people, make them feel small. But then when you have somebody that can battle you in that conversation, then he immediately turned to calling it her type of verbiage. Woman yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> when you start making up names, when you start calling people names, when you start insulting people, you know they got you. You know that they done batted you out the park because now you have no response. And now all you can resort to is name calling or, you know, it's the same as with bullies back in, in middle school. When they have nothing left, now we're going to attack you as a person. We're going to attack your character. Excuse me. Um, so that's not that's on purpose. Is he probably will never have another woman of her caliber on his show again, because it nobody wants to be challenged when it's your show. Nobody wants to be challenged. Well, he was on theirs. He oh, on I their didn't show. know that. Okay, yeah, that, that's their show. So then that even better. Like he he was not in his element, and that's not on that's on purpose. When he does his show and he brings people in, he needs to make sure that he's the one that's gonna look smart. And then there's plenty of women out there, unfortunately, that for the attention and to be able to, you know, go out there, they really make themselves look stupid with some of the things that they say. And it's, it's unfortunate, but it happens. And that's mm-hmm. that's them. That's why when we talk about, cause he said him and a lot of men in the comments, oh, but women, this is what women are looking for. Women are looking for six foot, whatever, and money. Okay, some women. She's not in the category of the women who are looking for that. I'm not in the category of the women who are looking for that. That's the difference. If you want that kind of woman, then go for it. You want the gold digging, I only want a six foot tall, six foot plus tall man, then go for it. But don't don't complain then if she doesn't bring substance, if she doesn't bring anything more to the table because the shallow mindset of only physicality matters. You're not going to find that in a woman that brings more to the table. So for me, what I define as a top tier woman, a top tier woman to me, like all jokes aside, is I've always found the type of woman that I want to deal with by I judge the kind of woman she is based on how she can handle losses. And when I say losses, I'm talking about my losses. That 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 may sound selfish, but Yeah, Eric. I, I wanna I wanna I wanna know that she is willing to stick around during my losses because everybody wants a winner. Everyone loves a winner. But is that person willing to stick around through your losses? Or even if you start off that relationship on losses, because a woman who sticks around and a man, what defines him to me is what he will come after these losses. My woman is top tier because I've been through losses and she's still around. I think it's important to recognize that you're also still around because I think the fear that a lot of women have because it's happened so much in life is that a woman holds down the man when he's going through his losses, when he's going through his hard times, when he's going through those moments of building and then he gets to the top. Some run. And he's out. 
So I think that is why a lot of women are so skeptical to help build a man up. It's not that they won't. It's just it's happened so much in history where you do hold that man down. And then when he got everything he want, he's out. And that that is what holds a lot. of. I mean, I see that happen a lot in sports and like in, in entertainment. I've seen it. I've seen the stories of, of multiple celebrities that that were with this person. And given you, you can grow out of a person. For sure. And that that also leads me into this, because it's been said that there are a lot of men out here who are in relationships with women who don't like these women at all, but they are with these women for the benefits that the relationship brings. Do you believe that that's true? I know that it is because I can honestly say, I mean, it's my past that I've been one of these men who was dealing with women, not because I, I like them, but because of the benefits of a relationship. Yeah, there's there's a lot of people out there. And I hate I hate saying men, 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 because I don't dislike men. I don't like I have plenty of yeah, guys do. in my life. No, I don't. Like <laughs> I have plenty of guys that are in my life that are friends, family members. You, you know, you, we're a new friendship, but you know, you're you're a solid guy. So I feel like I don't want anyone to get the impression that I'm like anti men, but there's so much of it that is exactly what you're saying. A lot of men don't like women. And I'm not 100% blaming them because I've had this theory where men grow up to be taught a lot of men. Again, this is not a generalization. A lot of men grow up to think that crying is girly. You hit like a girl. You run like a girl. Everything associated with girls when boys are little is bad. Like, don't cry. Gr crying is for girls. Oh, you threw that ball kind of soft. Girls throw like that. So you. It is for girls. <laughs> <laughs> so this is over. <laughs> so, you know, it. I feel like guys grow up automatically thinking that everything girls do is bad. Crying is bad. Having emotions is bad. This is bad. That's bad. And that is what makes women women. It makes having emotions. Men have emotions. Anger is an emotion. OK, so it's a bad one. men have emotions. It's not that they don't have emotions. They may not portray their emotions the same way, which is unfortunate, because if men were able to show their emotions the way we do, like if a guy were to just cry and wouldn't be looked at like he's being a little bitch, maybe more men would be more healed. But men have always been taught to keep it all in, to not cry, to not show emotion, because again, it's all bad and women do that stuff. So I don't remember what the topic of this conversation was. Men, men, <laughs> men not liking women. So you get into relationships with someone who is portraying everything you were taught not to like growing up. You're in a relationship with somebody who cries. You're in a relationship with somebody who wants to talk through their feelings. You're in a relationship with somebody that wants to, you know, that wants to have, you know, a, a community with their friends and their family and all that. And men are more taught to be lone wolves. So, you know, it's, it's kind of sad, but yeah, absolutely. I think that there are plenty of men who are in relationships that don't like their partner. You can tell simply by the things that they do in their relationship, like ignoring their partner, like leaving, cheating on them alone is a great big, I don't like you because there's no way that you love someone and can cheat on them knowing how devastating that's going to be for that person. Well, to me, me personally, like I could say, you know, it, it was just a part of, I guess, growing for me. And it was me being immature. And, you know, the woman, you only end up hurting the woman in this. But you, you, I did it because I was being selfish. Like, for example, one woman I was, uh, I was with, I didn't like her. But I, I didn't have nowhere to sleep at the time. She lived by herself. You call that a hobo sexual? Oh, what is <laughs> so I stood with her and put up with whatever because, you know, I had a place to lay my head. And some some would say that why if you don't like somebody, why not just leave them? Because as men, sometimes we just do selfish shit and I needed a place to stay. So it's like act like you like this person to to have a place mm -hmm. to ra raise your um, lay your head and then. 
deal with her until you have your own stuff and then move on. And it's, it's terrible. It's a terrible mindset. Yeah, it is. It was very immature of me. And, um, you know, I hurt I hurt people in the past and it, it, it didn't make me feel good. I don't 100 percent blame the men for this, because when we're when, as a woman, when we're with someone that doesn't like us, we know it. Like we know, we can tell, like I said, your actions are going to show us that you don't like us. When somebody likes me, I know that whether it's just as a friend or not, when somebody likes me, I can feel that energy. I can feel the things that they do, the things that we do together, the things that happen. I can tell somebody likes me when somebody doesn't like you, you know, they don't like you, but you're also sticking around. For example, the lady that you were with that you didn't like, she knew you didn't like her. She probably knew you were just crashing. But you know what's crazy, though? You probably think I like you and I don't. Yes, you do. I because, wouldn't be in your because house. Because I'm, I'm wearing the mask. No, well. you're not. No, you're not. Okay, okay. You, you like me in a very respectful way, but you like me. I'm mad cool. There's no way you don't. Mm, you know what I mean? Like, you can't. It's debatable. I'm in your podcast for a second time. Yeah, because he, you don't invite yeah. a lot of people to your podcast. I got that in writing. Do I need to bring it up? You showed up at my door. I didn't know where you lived. I got your address from who? From the yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> said, uh, uh. <laughs> but you're also not benefiting from me. So if you don't like me, I couldn't care less. This is exposure for both of us. I don't really like you, but here we are. Right. So. That's true. <laughs> so you're not benefiting. There's you are benefiting because the video with me went viral. So you are benefiting. Duh. Hello. Yes, yes. But <laughs> there's we have to take responsibility. I'm really big on accountability. And I think women also need to take responsibility when they are with someone that they clearly know does not like them. We need to take responsibility and be like, I'm a bow out because this person just simply doesn't like me. But you're benefiting from it by having somewhere to stay. We're benefiting from it by having a partner, at least a warm body in a bed, at least somebody at the house when they get when I get home from work. OK, so you just said a little while ago, right? <clears throat> like one of the big tells, like if a guy cheats on you, he obviously doesn't like you. Right. Do you feel that if two people are in a relationship and one person cheats, that automatically means that that person is not madly in love with their partner because, because they did that? Yeah. You do? Absolutely. I don't know. I, I can't agree with that. Of course not. You're a man. What is the man? What, what is me being a man Men have to do with that? Men justify cheating somehow, some way. In I, no, I'm not trying to say justify because it's, because it's wrong. It's, it's shitty. But, because when a woman cheats on a man, the reaction is totally different. But the it should reaction, be the same. But it's not. Unfortunately, but... <laughs> A man cheating on a woman and a woman cheating on a man is no different. It's it's, but it's it the is same thing. Most women cheat emotionally first, meaning by the time they cheat physically, I'm out. Some men cheat emotionally too. So some men out here are super emotional. Less than women. Yeah. I, I feel like the the you know the it's it's less than women. More men cheat because they saw some somebody they like. They like the body. They like you know the face. Whatever. Liked, not loved. I didn't say nothing about them right. loving the person they cheated with, but they don't love the person that they're with if they've cheated. Why? Because how? How, how, okay. how can you say that? Okay, when you love someone, okay, you don't want to hurt them. You don't want to make them cry. You don't want to harm them. You don't want to cause them pain. You respect them. You you treat them with the utmost respect. You never want them to be in a position to be laughed at, to be pointed at, you know, for other people to be able to have something negative to say. You want to protect what's yours. You want to protect your household. When you cheat on them. Man, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you cheat on them, all of that. Every single, the trust, the loyalty, the respect, no, that's the, true. everything has a crack in it. Every single aspect of love has a crack in it now because you put them out there and you are risking their health because you're probably not using protection. You don't, you probably didn't ask the Why person. Why are you pointing at me? Point that finger somewhere else. Like you could point it in the sky. Like we just talking like, you, I don't know what you're talking that about. That plant is not using yeah, protection. Clearly. The person These that you're cheating wrong. with, that the plant is cheating with, you didn't ask that person for their last STD results. Like you are doing so much reckless shit just for one nut that it's insane. And you're putting that person's like, 
how many people haven't gotten into a, a love triangle situation where the person they cheated with kills the person that they that they're cheating on just because they're mm -hmm. so jealous. They follow them. Picture you cheating on somebody and they follow you to your house. You got your wife here and you got your daughter. You know what I mean? So what where was your mind what thinking of your family when you did that? And, you know, the biggest thing about cheating for me is how much it takes to to cheat it takes lying to your partner about where you're going it takes maybe your partner calling and you're purposely ignoring their phone call it takes meeting up with somebody knowing that your partner's probably at home waiting for you there's so much calculation that takes into cheating that it there's just i i just don't believe that you could possibly do that to somebody you love Fair enough. A cheater is a cheater. You can send someone who's not a cheater. I'm not a cheater, no matter what. You can send me to across the pond. Johnny Depp could be there. Kit Harrington could be there. Liam Hemsworth could be there. So you all like my Johnny Depp. All, I love Johnny Depp. That's daddy right there. But anyway, all my celebrity Yo, crushes daddy. can be there. And I'm not cheating on my man. There's just no way, shape, or form. If I was a cheater, I'd cheat. I'm not a cheater. So the temptation could be right in front of me. And it won't matter because I love and respect my partner. Whereas if I didn't, then it really wouldn't matter. You are we saying? talking about mistake cheating? Or are we There's talking no such thing <laughs> as a mistake cheat. <laughs> There's no such thing as a mistake <laughs> cheat. Mistakes are when you don't know what you're doing. Like I said, cheating is very calculated. Just own it. You said earlier, if you're going to do something, own it. If you're going to say something, own it. If you're going to cheat, you say, I cheated because I wanted to cheat. Not because she stopped wearing lingerie. Not because she put on a few pounds. Not because she's not home from work. You cheated because you wanted to cheat. Not because you were intoxicated. Not because you were intoxicated. You cheated because you wanted to cheat. That's the simple fact of the matter. When you can accept things for what they are, you can just move on with life. Accountability is hard. It's it's the hardest thing in the world, mm -hmm. but it's necessary. It's the only thing that we can do that will change us forward to move upwards and onwards. So what about consent? What about it? Do you feel consent is different for men than it is for women? So when you look up a word in the dictionary... It doesn't say consent he and then consent it she don't. and then consent they and then consent we. It says consent. Consent is consent. So are you speaking sexually? Are you speaking just in like what what terms? We are, are speaking, speaking in terms of touching someone without them. Touching someone. With giving <laughs> giving you the permission like in places that maybe you should not. Um, for like example. Like lower back. <clears throat> Um, I don't, I don't, that could be inappropriate for some people. Me personally, I don't. And I say that to say this. So on Halloween, you know, I was dressed as, as Michael Myers and I did a pretty, the tallest Michael Myers. I did a pretty seen. good job. So good of a job that I end up taking like over a hundred pictures because people stopped me and they, they, they saw the craftsmanship in my work. So, you know, they wanted to, it turned into like a, 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 you know, a, a photo op that I didn't. Real quick, I think we have the title for this episode. Okay. Tooting our own horns. Okay. That's we, been the theme. Okay, we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, again, I could be wrong, but me personally, are. yeah, well, you know, I'm a man, so, you know, <laughs> could be. Um, there's certain things you could do when taking photos with a stranger that I think is appropriate. Um, but then there are things that, you know, when you start rubbing on a person's stomach and then going a little lower to where, you know, his man unit might be, then it becomes a little. Did someone touch your man unit when you were dressed as Michael Myers? Close enough. So I had to end the pictures because um, it was getting it was getting too handsy. Also, when I say is, <clears throat> is there a difference between um, consent in a man and a woman? Because, you know. Growing up, me personally, I can't speak for all men, but when I've seen a girl I liked, what confirmed to me that she liked me, and maybe this was just a stupid way of thinking, is if she touched me. If I knew, like, she came and she was like, hey, Eric, put a hand on my shoulder, rub my stomach, never once did I, I feel like I was being essayed, you know, and I'm just, you know, I know. trying to be safe. I know. With the word, but I, I that never crossed my mind as to where, 
I feel like with women, it's different because a lot of women and, you know, through social media, we've seen that, you know, men, even the most innocent touch could be seen as them being essayed or or I don't think we look at it like that because we've been conditioned to feel like as men, we can't be harassed by women because if women touch us, she's feeling me. And I like that idea. Right. So I think this is a perfect way to go back to what I was saying about how we were raised. Like little boys are not usually told. I hope that that's changing. But from what I know, little boys back in the day are not told, hey, if somebody touches you here, make sure you let me know like this is inappropriate. As a little girl, that was ingrained into my brain. Anybody touches you front, back, up, top, downside, you let mom know. I don't know that little boys get that same thing. Like you said, you're conditioned to believe, oh, if she's next to you, she likes you. We're conditioned to believe if he's mean to you, he likes you. And that is the biggest crock of shit that we need to stop teaching our little girls. If he's mean to you, ignore the shit out of him and walk away and let him be nice and get your attention that way. But we're not raised the same way. So I think as we get older, men kind of, because not a lot, men know to keep their hands to themselves. Whereas if a woman sees you dressed as Michael Myers, or if I see somebody dressed as, you know, Jack Sparrow, I'm going to run up to them like, please hug me. My thing is keep your hands to yourself. I've said it before. Like when I say that people see me in the supermarket, they want to hug me. I'm like, it's cool. Just ask me first. Like make sure that I'm in the right space, the right head space to be okay with a hug at that moment. Don't put your hands on somebody else. Unless they give you the explicit consent, don't put your hands on nobody else. Men, women, child, ch- children shouldn't be forced to hug people they don't want to hug. Give them the opportunity to say, okay, yeah, I feel comfortable enough with this person to hug them. Don't just force your child to hug random people. That's weird. You see, with me, when I was taking the pictures, I did what I would call um, <laughs> assumption consent. Because <laughs> these people, they come to take pictures of me, I, I put my hand around them on their shoulder again to me everybody's different to me i feel like it's safe but then again i may be i may have been crossing boundaries so to think, some of these people I as well not known a situation with like a picture that's sort of implied that we're probably going to put an arm around your shoulder you're going to put your arm around my waist that's kind of okay when in doubt ask like i don't think there's anything wrong with like oh you know can i can we take a hug and usually like when i got here the first time like we kind of like went into a hug like is it okay yes no and that's okay it's okay to ask it's when in doubt for any type of consent even if it's taking a picture if it's having sex it's okay to ask is it okay that I do this to you? Okay, so <laughs> if, if you didn't, whether you saw the video or not, all right, just just imagine this as I describe oh, it to boy. you. If somebody's coming up to me, right, mm-hmm. they're obviously shorter than me. They're looking up at me, and they're taking both their hands, and they're just rubbing it up and down and, and, and on, on, on my stomach, and then just looking up at me like as if they were gazing at me like they were in love. <laughs> To me, I'm like, okay, this is this is a little weird. That's inappropriate. That's it's a little weird. And my wife is right there taking the videos. Whether your wife was there or not, that's right. very inappropriate. What I'm saying is, it, it's these. I don't know. It, I feel like it just gets like dusted under the rug unless men make it an issue. Right. You have to speak up the same way. Somebody touches me. I punched this guy in the face one time at Old Town because we were sitting at a table at karaoke and he was like, oh, hey, you know, he like put his hand on my knee. And I was like, don't do that again. And he did it again. And I didn't say it again. I punched him in the face. I said, I told you not to touch my knee. Don't do it again. So answer me this. Right. Because, again, no, you shouldn't have punched her in the face. (laughs) (laughs) For men, does it work like this for women also? Because. I've seen a lot of gym videos also. You know, you've seen the the women recording in the gym. They catch the guy um, in the background Mm -hmm. and then post it saying he's being a creep. Now, me knowing I used to work in a gym, right? I've never thought somebody was a creep that I may have found attractive. Right. Are these people creeps to these women because they don't find them attractive or... 
it don't matter how cute you may be, you're still a creep. Because I, I've never seen a girl that I found attractive just overly watching me in the gym. And I'm like, yo, she's a creep. I'm like, yo, I think she's feeling me. Maybe I go highlight that. You as a woman, if you saw a guy that you thought was handsome looking at you in the gym, would you find him to be a creep? It depends on how he's looking. There's a difference between staring while I'm doing my workout and you coming over to me and like, I'm, you know, I noticed you, I'd like to take you out. But when you're kind of like moving from machine to machine, I don't care how cute you are, that it's creepy and it's not, it's not attractive. I'm not necessarily at the gym to find somebody. If it happens, it happens. Right. But I will never find it attractive. If a guy, no matter how cute he is, is standing there staring at me doing squats or lifting weights or running on the treadmill, not doing his own workout, simply focused on me. It's creepy as hell. And it's inappropriate. Fair enough. I feel like guys, I feel like as a society, we need to be okay with guys speaking up more about don't don't do shit like that. Don't go up to somebody and, and put your arms up their body. Like you but, should be able to won't. say, I know they won't because they're so focused on what everybody else thinks about them and what everybody else is going to say. If you would have said, listen, you know, that's inappropriate. She probably would have laughed, ran away, whatever. Right, that's the thing. That would have made you feel a certain way. Even though you were the one being assaulted, you saying that is 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 just is only further proof that it is it's just it's just different when it comes into consent because that's just like when a guy say, oh, this girl, you know, essayed me. Men on the outside looking in, and women will probably laugh at that because you are a man. Like, come on, man See, up. I would never man laugh. up. I would never laugh at anybody. I have a lot of friends guy friends who have confided in me. I have that aura that allows people to confide in me. I don't know what it is. I always thought I had rest in bitch face. You told me I have rest in that's bitch face the last time I was I here. I did. Put that on replay. <sighs> this, 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 that's so right. So I feel like I have the personality that people confide in me. Or it's It's been like that my whole life. I have a lot of guy friends that have confided in me that they've been essayed throughout their life and they've never told a single person because of how they might feel like the people might talk back to them, how somebody might laugh at them, not believe them. I don't think a woman wouldn't believe them because we know what it feels like to, to be assaulted, to be, you know, just touched inappropriately, whatever, and not be believed. You know what I mean? So, um, I thankfully, thank God have never experienced full blown essay, but when I was nine, a guy from our neighborhood, um, he pressed himself on my lower back. And I didn't tell my mom till I was like 26, like a couple years ago. So, you know, it's not because I was afraid of what might happen, but he didn't touch me any of the places that I was told not to let anyone touch me. So I think in my little nine year old brain, it was like, oh, wait, maybe that wasn't that bad. But let me not. You know what I mean? So for little boys, I can imagine Again, they're not those those conversations are not welcomed. A lot of those conversations are not openly available at their households with their moms or their dads, even their brothers and sisters to where they can go to their parents or their loved ones or their close family members and be like, hey, this happened. I don't like it. I was it was uncomfortable. What can I do about it? So they keep it in. I feel like people think that SA only happens to women the majority. I think just as many men have been essayed throughout their lives, they just don't speak on it. A lot of women who I've encountered in my lifetime, well, I'd say every woman who I can like speak to like this have have went through that. I don't know that I've spoke to a woman a, a woman that like I said like that I've spoken to like this whether coworker or whatever. Dave Somebody has touched them, which yeah. is crazy to me that I've spoken to a lot of women in my life, just like not even as like to lay down with just as friends or just people who just have a casual conversation. The um, the amount of women that I've spoke to that that have been touched is absurd. Yeah, that's why it was when that whole bear thing, you know, man versus bear came out and so many men were like, oh, shut up, you know, whatever. I, I commented a couple times, like, just go have a conversation with your mom. Go have a conversation with your little sister or your wife or your daughter. 
Go have a conversation with the women in your life. And maybe you will realize why women are saying that we would rather be in, in, a, in the woods with a bear than a man because we're just existing and men are just touching us just because I, we exist. I, I, I think a lot of men missed that and were too quick to be offended. It didn't yeah. offend me. No, because you're not out no there because being worse than a bear. Like during that, that whole same, I want to say trend. I don't want to call it a trend. That was, yeah. there was, um, a set of twin girls that were just in New York. And, um, this kid, I'll just call him a kid. He unalived one of them because of, she, what was it? She didn't want to give him her her phone number. <laughs> Bear, I get it. Right. I get it. In Texas, um, like three weeks ago, there was a lady who had reported this guy to HR a couple times because he would not stop. He was like obsessed with her. And he went and shot her five times at her job in Texas just because she's like, listen, I'm good. Like, I'm good. So Today, I looked on YouTube just oh I, I think he just got charged he unalived his co-worker because she was taking too many breaks i think it was the i think it's the same one you sure yes i, I believe it's the same one because i know exact that story sounds so familiar that i feel like it's I think it's all together. He was obsessed with her, so he was clocking the breaks that she was taking. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it is. It's yeah. the same story. And what about the young girl where the maintenance guy here in Orlando killed her? Like, I mean, I hope you're putting a trigger warning on this video, but it's we are just existing and we're we're being eliminated from the planet just for existing because we have the audacity to reject people that we don't want to be with. Another dude unalived um a young lady who was selling him. She was trying to get money. <clears throat> um, and this dude said he was going to pay $900 for a pair of Yeezys. Shot her. I believe it. That's, that's the thing. Like what I, I, I How wish you take men, out a woman, man. I wish men would have the Not the men like you. I wish the men who combat the pristine top tier, you know, <clears throat> can we cut? <laughs> We need to start this whole thing all over again. I wish the men that have something to say about man versus bear would actually, again, sit sit in a room with every female friend you have. All your, you know, your mom, your aunts, your sisters, your daughters, your cousins, your female friends, everybody. Have a conversation with them about why they would choose the bear. Have a conversation with them about this. And you it should open your eyes. But you got to go into that conversation with an open mind. That's the problem. A lot of people don't want to have these conversations. They don't want the reality of the conversation. They listen to respond and to be combative, but they don't listen to understand what it is that we're saying. But still, in all this madness, knowing all uh, the craziness us men do, women still find it in their hearts to date us, which brings me to, oh. <laughs> I had stopped by your live and saw you. Uh, because you don't like me? Is that why you stopped hey, by my live? Hey, whatever, man. You All dislike right? me so much. I don't. I don't. But you you just ended up here, so I got to <laughs> talk to you for a little bit before I kick you out. But I saw you discussing a date that you was on, oh, uh, and I, I didn't catch all of it, so I need it from the top because it sounded like a... Um, a date from hell. It was I like my those. it was my Twilight Zone episode. That's what it was. It wasn't a date. It was it was the it was the worst day of my life, I think. And I've I broke my finger by slamming it in a vault door and that was a pretty bad day. But this date was That sounds fire. It was it was mm -hmm. great. There was a lot mm -hmm. of blood everywhere. Oh dope. But um so I can't give too many details because even though this person is a loser, um I can't I don't like to put other people's business out there. I'll put my business out there all day. But um, to break it down just a little bit, uh, we had decided we were going to meet up. He was coming into town on the other side of town. We were going to meet up. We made this plan a month in advance. I put everything on my calendar. I forget things. So everything goes on my calendar. Put it on my calendar. Made sure that I was ready for that day. My biggest issue, and this is, I'm taking full accountability for the entire day. I should have made better choices. You, you should have. You did not. I'm hanging up on you. <laughs> Ten lashes for you. <laughs> so um, the day before, I reached out and I said, hey, what's the plan? And he's like, oh, 
things kind of change. There's more people coming, so I'll let you know what the plan is. I'm like, more people coming on your date? Not. It wasn't a date. We were gonna hang out for the day, so it wasn't a date. We were just gonna hang out. Like we've known each other a long time, so we were gonna hang out. So. So this wasn't your boo. We were sort of. We were kind of getting to that place. We were like ish. Boo ish. Yeah. We were like kind of reconnecting. I guess you could say. So we um. He said, oh, I'll let you know. I didn't hear back from him. Midnight, he tells me that he needs a ride from the airport. And I'm like, I didn't hear from you all day long. He's like, yeah, but if I, you know, if you can't pick me up, then I can't go. And I'm like, okay. If, I, if you don't pick him up for the airport at midnight, he No, it, it was for the next morning. But he called me at midnight to tell me. Oh, I thought he was flying in like red eye. No, no, no. So he was flying in the next day. I'm like, you know what? I was already planning on, on spending the day with you, so... Why not, right? That was mistake number three at this point, and I haven't even seen him yet. You a sucker, man. I am. I am. You. At that moment, I absolutely was, but it, <laughs> it needed to happen. And again, I take accountability. You see how I didn't get defensive when you called me a sucker? Yeah, because you. I took accountability. I'm a grown woman. I take accountability for mm -hmm. my actions. That's not to absolve him of his actions, but so I pick him up. I happen to mention I'm hungry. I told you before I had bariatric surgery, so I have to eat every so often. And so I'm like, oh, I'm a little hungry. All right. So he didn't acknowledge it, nothing, whatever. We get to where we're going. You know, there's just, you know, the talking, family talking, whatever. And um, we end up having to go to the supermarket. And then we stopped at a gas station. When we stopped at the gas station, I'm like, when we leave this gas station, I need to get something to eat. We got to stop somewhere. It doesn't matter where. I need to eat. He comes out the gas station with a bag of munchkins from Dunkin' Donuts inside the gas station. The little circle? The little circles. Okay. Do you think he offered me a singular munchkin? This was before you said you were hungry or, or after? I said I was hungry, like, in conversation when he first got in my car. And I had just said I'm starving. Right, well, th this, this is the most important thing right here. What flavor were these munchkins? <laughs> Um, this makes all the I difference. I think they were just the glazed ones. Yeah, he had a shit hole. Oh, yeah, my sure. favorite are the chocolate, but I would have taken a glaze. At that point, I was starving. You know, I could feel my spinal cord from, like, the front, yeah. from how, like— I know that feeling. You know what I mean? Felt that this morning. Right. So, and then you ate cold eggs. So, you know, anyway. So, <laughs> I didn't get a munchkin at all. So, we went back to where— You didn't ask him? Nah, I don't ask people for their food. But how you know he had a, a shareable amount? Because when there's somebody <laughs> with you, you get a shareable amount, whether you think they're going to want one or not. Or you share the amount that you have. Or you share. If you got two, you share. How many balls did you see him chuck back okay, in Okay, so you know they sell them in like half dozen, dozen. So he at least minimum had six. Balls. Balls. Chugged in his Because he surely ain't got two. Mm. He got at least six in that damn Dunkin' Donuts bag. I didn't get a single one. All right, cool. So we go back to where we were chilling at. Uh, some time goes by. Hold on. Before we continue, you watched him eat all of these I watched right next eat. to you? Yeah. Like he was driving and eating them. And I'm sitting there like, bummer. <laughs> okay. So, all right, cool. So we get back to where we're going, to where we were chilling at. And a family member tells him, yo, your friend is hungry. Because she had mentioned she was hungry too. He's like, we're all hungry. I was like, I right, cool. So at that point, I knew I had to take it into my own hands. So I ordered myself some sushi. I went and got it, but I also got beef fried rice because I just wanted a little bit. I don't even eat a lot of rice, so I shouldn't have gotten shit, but I did. And so I get back. I'm sharing the sushi only with one person because she was nice. <laughs> <laughs> and she tells him, hey, try this rice. He eats all my rice, all of it. I'm like, ah. Oh. He eats all your rice? He ate the rice, yeah. And he already had the balls in his throat. And he had the balls. Wow. Rice and balls, that's not my kind of party, not today. This was your rice? This was my rice that I went and picked up. What I should have done was gone and got it, jumped on I-4 and come home, but I didn't because, again, I made a lot of stupid choices that day. So uh, whatever, we're, we're sitting there, whatever. He ends up having to go back to the gas station, tells me, stay here, I'll be back. I was like... Okay. Where's your car? He this is a rental he has. My car is there. He has a he was using a family member's car. Okay. So all right, cool. I stay there. Wait and wait and wait, 
And then finally, we go to dinner at this Mexican place. We ordered the same thing, but the other two people that were with us had ordered first. They got their food before I got mine. He got his food before I got mine. And we got the same thing. I was like, damn, how you get your food first? We ordered the same thing. He was like, damn, and proceeded to eat it. And it was a sandwich, so it was cut in two. Veronica being Veronica, I would have been like, look, here's half my sandwich. When you get yours, you give me the other give half. Me the other half. <laughs> But no. What kind of sandwich? It was a birria toast. Hmm. You know, like birria tacos, but it was toast. So it was, I think it was probably. Birria, you mean? No, I don't. You're adding this extra. I don't mean birria. I mean birria because it's two R's and it's in Spanish. You married to a Puerto Rican. You should know how to roll your R's. You didn't need to add the. But that's how you say it. Sounds like a money machine. It's not birria. It's birria. (laughs) <laughs> I'm yeah, so okay. done. All right. Anyway, so it's Barrier a, sand- barrier. It's a sandwich. Like, give me half your damn sandwich. I was like, all right, cool. I said, it's not like you could have given me half. He was oblivious to the whole thing. We you didn't make back. any of these arguments. You ain't ask him for none of the balls. No. You ain't ask him for your rice back. No, because at that He's point. He's just punking you for yeah, your food at 100%. this point. 100%. At that point, my mind was like, I'm never talking to homeboy again. So I got back, got my keys, went to my car, drove off. That's it. That was it. I I needed that to happen because I feel like he could have talked away. He could have explained away one or two of the things. Like he could have explained it. And I would have been like, oh, OK, you know, because I'm a decent person and I like to give people a little tiny baby bit of benefit of the doubt. But uh, everything happened the way that it needed to so that I knew that that was not the guy for me. Would you give him a second shot? No.